When it comes to emulation, performance, accuracy, and stability are important. This is more true with fighting games because slowdowns can truly ruin an experience that would otherwise have been enjoyable. I found 17 playable fighting games on the emulator, which is pretty decent, but there are notable omissions like Street Fighter X Tekken, Soul Calibur V, and Mortal Kombat. These were unplayable due to a variety of reasons, including slowdowns and frequent crashes. I never knew about Persona 4 Arena Ultimax until researching for this video. Having said that, it's fast-paced and requires lots of skill to master, so the combat is great. The character roster is taken from both Persona 3 and 4, so fans of the series have lots to appreciate here. That's a shame. I really wanted to save the best for last. Dragon Ball Xenoverse tells an original story where your custom character goes back in time to revisit events from the television show. It's interesting. However, I can't help but think this is squarely aimed at the fans. After a while, it can become overly repetitive. The Wheel of Fate is turning. Rebel 1. Action. Close. Chrono Phantasma is the third in the Blaze Blue series and viewed by many as the best so far. Combat was overhauled from its predecessor, featuring a new mechanic called Overdrive. For those of you who don't know, the game has been released on Steam. Get ready, fight! As long as you run at native resolution and dial FSR to 100%, dead or alive will render correctly. You won't get the face bug that seems to plague the game. Overall, it is one of the best looking fighting games on the PS3, and I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. Go time! <laughs> <laughs> Skullgirls is wacky and over the top, but in a really fun way. The combat feels unique and the cartoony graphics are pleasant to the eyes. It is on PC and mobile if you're interested. Honestly, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 would be higher on my list if it wasn't so unstable. I raised the driver wake-up delay to 400, but it still crashed every 40 minutes. I suppose it's better than nothing, but at this point, it's only barely playable. Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe was the last game made by Midway before the company went bust in 2009. After that, the franchise was bought by Warner Brothers Entertainment. In this game, Shao Kahn and Dark Seed merged to form a supervillain called Dark Khan. And now it's up to the heroes to join forces and overthrow this new evil. It's an interesting concept and I like it. This was the last King of Fighters to use sprites. In my opinion, it's still the most visually stunning fighting game in two dimensions. It's colorful and fast. So if it fits your style, you're going to love this awesome game. The Soul Calibur series peaked on the PS2. The third game has always been my favorite, but there's no doubt that Soul Calibur 4 was a good game. I loved playing it. The post-processing effects were a little strong though, especially the bloom. I like the character roster of 4 the most. Street Fighter is not a true 3D fighting game, utilizing a special blend of 2D and 3D elements to render in 2.5D graphics. The Ultra version includes new stages, a new announcer, and four new characters from Street Fighter X Tekken.
Tekken 6 has an extensive beat-em-up mode that features a new character. He is part of the regular roster though and can be played in the arcade mode. The stages are bigger and more interactive, and sometimes new areas are revealed when walls or floors are broken. Impressively, the game was ported to PSP, and to this day it's still rated highly on the portable console. This may be controversial to some, but Virtua Fighter V was the best on PS3. Don't get me wrong, Tekken came close, but Virtua Fighter was almost perfect. It's easy to get into, yet hard to master, thanks to challenging opponents and a steep difficulty curve as you start progressing. But that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.